ordinance 4686 so as to appropriate additional operating funds for tourist related projects. Mrs. Kaiser, has anyone signed up to speak in favor or in opposition? No, sir. Would anyone like to speak in, uh, in favor of this? Okay. You may come forward, please, ma'am, and give us your name and address uh, when you reach the podium. Excuse me, ma'am, would you pull that microphone Sorry. down, please? Thank you. Our next public hearing is the Greenville Anderson Multi County Industrial Business Park Agreement Amendment CH2M Hill Incorporated. This public hearing has been held for the purpose of receiving public comments regarding an ordinance to amend an agreement for the development of the Joint County Industrial and Business Park 2010 Park of Anderson and Greenville County so as to enlarge the park. Mrs. Kaiser, has anyone signed up to speak in favor or in opposition? Yes, sir. Does anyone in the audience like to speak in favor of this? Would anyone like to speak in opposition? Hearing none, I declare this public hearing closed. Uh, next public hearing is Mitsubishi Polyester Film Incorporated, formerly Project Diamondback, the Little Tax Agreement. This public hearing has been held for the purpose of receiving public comments regarding an ordinance authorizing a fee in lieu of tax and infrastructure improvement credit arrangement pursuant to a fee in lieu of tax agreement between Greenville County, South Carolina, and Mitsubishi Polyester Film Incorporated and other matters relating to the foregoing. Mrs. Kaiser, has anyone signed up to speak in favor or in opposition? Yes. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this? Would anyone like to speak in opposition? Here now I declare this public hearing closed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Dill. Uh, this public hearing is being held for the purpose of receiving public comments regarding the ordinance to add provisions to the Greenville County Code to regulate tire businesses that are setting you and our waste tires in the unincorporated areas of Greenville County. Is there anybody signed up to speak? Mm -hmm. um, yes, sir. We have one in favor and three in opposition. Okay, if one in favor would come forward. Stevenson, 415 West Cliff Way, Greenville, 
district. I'd like to thank uh, Councilman Meadows for his work on this project. Mr. Dill for getting it introduced. Uh, waste tires and used tires are certainly an issue and a problem in Greenville County as a whole. Uh, they certainly are up in the western, northwestern side of Greenville. One only needs to take a ride from I-85 north on 25 to practically all the way to Traveler's Rest to see what the conditions are. They are a health hazard. They're actually got, gotten to be somewhat of a danger. There was one rolled out on Little Route 25 the other day, and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, not too far from, from Westcliff. Uh, the thing that I'd like to uh, bring to the council's attention uh, and also to uh, the codes folks, I think this will be up to the county attorney to review this, but there's a couple of things that I think need to be looked at in terms of in terms suitability for resale. And I know this is to keep these things locked up, but it does mention suitability, and there is no definition of what that is. The state of South Carolina falls way short in terms of equipment violations and equipment uh, such as ducts of tires and what the condition of the tires have to be to be suitable or unsuitable in waste. That's really not what this is meant to cover, but I think it needs to be pointed out you know, within that, within the uh, ordinance itself. And it certainly will go a long way to help the uh, county codes enforce what is becoming a both a health and a physical uh, problem of too many tires in the community area. Again, thank you. Is anyone else to speak in favor of this ordinance? Anyone else to speak in favor? Is there anyone that will speak against? We've got one listed, I believe. Uh, Tim Hughes. Tim Hughes. You come forward. Mr. Grant, I live on 
of 1375 Jackson Road, Dayton. I run maybe on March, the new tire store, new tire store, and Gales store on uh, Augusta Road. Um, from the way I'm against this, because the way it's written, um, you're asking for all, I can understand the problem with tires, but you're asking for all tires to be placed inside in an enclosed building up to fire code. We called our fire chief and he told us that building up to fire code requires for tires to be stored inside a sprinkler system. The way this industry industry is with the used tire dealers and businesses, there's no way that anyone in the used tire industry could afford to build structures and put fire suppression in them to store all tires inside an enclosed building. It's just not possible. Um, the, the income of the used tires, it does offer a service, like everyone said, and but the way that this is written, it just isn't feasible to be able to put the, uh, keep the stores open. The um, store, this would put, if this goes through exactly the way it is, it would put at least 98% of the used tire stores out of business. No way that we could afford to move into buildings or afford fire suppression. Uh, some form, I understand some points, but just not to this extent. Thank you. Okay. That concludes that. Well, if anyone else would like to speak again. Thank you, Council. I'm Trish Springfield. I also reside at 4 Meadowbrook Drive in Greenville, South Carolina. And yes, I'm uh, the wife of the husband who spoke a few months ago, Bill Springfield. I'm also a banker, and we do lend to businesses just like this. So a few comments I'll add for the record as we consider this proposal. One is that safety is mentioned in this document. And the proposal presents to us that without used tires, transportation would be more safe, that the roads would be safer for all of us. For this low-income area on 25, which we live on White Horse Road, those who cannot afford new will continue to ride on inappropriate tread tires. This will actually decrease the safety of those on the road. Something to consider for those who cannot afford a set of new tires. This document also mentions health. Certainly each business owner should maintain their property and the cleanliness and health of that property. So it'd be interesting to see are there health studies to support any support detriment to those around that area. Section three talks about outdoor storage. And certainly no one wants an unsightly business. I don't like any of those. I will suggest, however, that there are large retailers that do take great use of outdoor storage. Think of Lowe's, think of Walmart. Some we like to be displayed differently than others, but it is a use that many retailers incorporate and can do so in an effective way. Based on the used tire volume and the number of used tire dealers on White Horse Road, that does show us all an indication of the demand for this industry in that area. So we certainly understand your concern, but would ask for sufficient data to support the recommendation of this bill. Thank you. Anyone else that would speak against this order? Seeing no one, and I declare this public hearing closed. All right, the next item is current uh, citizen speaking on current agenda items. We want to sign up. Ms. Connery would be calling to the podium. <coughs>
<clears throat> I found that if indeed there were proper filters, uh, scrubbers, etc., on the top of these uh, stacks uh, where the cremation would take place, that it would take care of those pollutants. Uh, I will say then I talked to the gentleman who is buying the property and going to set up to the, the crematory, and he said he was going to, to put those filters on there. So one of my concerns was taken care of. I have to be one of my concerns is taken care of. That is chemical really taken care of. I, I think the pollutants, it's not going to be that big of a problem. Uh, the, the one thing that concerns me is the Trojan horse uh, that Mr. Lynn Ballard is always talking about. And this gentleman that I talked to, I, I, he's an honorable gentleman. I, th I think he'll do exactly what he says. But if he decides to sell the property uh, under that zoning, uh, it could uh, it could revert somebody who wasn't as uh, conscientious about putting those scrubbers on there. So although I'm satisfied as far as scrubbers will take care of it, and he said he would do that, I just uh, I, I just am concerned with the fact that if he were to uh, to decide to sell the property, then uh, somebody else coming there would be uh, a little less scrupulous. I will say that South Carolina does have uh, environmental standards for this. But, and uh, the gentleman said he was going to do more than what South Carolina requires. Uh, we're not as severe, I suppose, as other states, but we do have standards <coughs> and, uh, and uh, take care of it. I'm just concerned that, uh, that, that if it were sold, the person that bought it would not uh, do what this gentleman said. I would go beyond what the state requires. So I that's a concern I have. I found out that in order to put the proper Scrubbers, if you want to call them that, on the stacks, it doubles the cost of the crematory. Uh, it costs as much yeah. to put those on as it does to build it. So. Yes, sir. Well, of course, uh, we know uh, one of my parents at school was uh, on the, one, the crematory on the uh, on way down the boulevard. He does 1800 a year. Uh, and he's been doing that for a number of years. And he said that he has the best of uh, the uh, scrubbers. And the gentleman who buying his property says he will put the butt best on there more than what the state required. That's the only concern I have if it would be sold. As Mr. Burns told me when I first came here about uh, dogs on color, but things can change. So uh, uh, that's that's my report, Mr. Chair. All right, any other discussion? I'm, yes, I, obviously I had the same concerns and looked into it too, and, and I think you, you talked with you like as well. And that, <coughs> these are, um, uh, these are monitored and, and they have to uh, be checked, uh, I think, either two or four times a year by, and I don't know. by DHEC, so they continue from, so even if it was sold, um, they would still have to maintain the same uh, integrity of the system um, to, to continue right. to comply with, with the state regulations. With state regulations, which are not as severe as the other states. We're, we're not California, I guess. <laughs> He, would, he said he would do more than the state requires. Mm -hmm. Brothers, Mr. Powell, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Having spent 25 years in the chemical business and dealt with the state regulators, all of those 25, well, some of them just before state regulators, but at any rate, once the regulations get in place, they hold you to that. And if it changes hands, you still have to meet the regulations. And yes, Dr. Cates, South Carolina's regulations may not be as strict as uh, somebody said California. However, South Carolina's regulations protect the citizens to make sure that there's no harmful, in this case, vapors getting into the air that can harm the citizens. So while I understand your concern as far as maybe the next guy wouldn't put in as good a scrubbing system or whatever, the scrubbing system that the state requires and then follows up to make sure is working will have to be in place or the uh, business would be shut down. Thank you, Chair. Yes, sir. Any other discussion? All in favor of the voting order, please say aye. 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 Oh, no. no. Oh, yes. <laughs>
CZ 
Raymond Lamps and Multi County Industrial Business Park Agreement Amendment for Project Powell. I move for adoption in third reading in ordinance authorizing an amendment to the agreement for the development of the Joint County Industrial and Business Park by and between Rainbow County, South Carolina, and Anderson County, South Carolina, in order to expand the boundaries of the park to include certain property located in Anderson County and other matters related thereto. Any discussion on the ordinance? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Pass unanimously. All right, now we have ordinances at second reading. We'll start with Mr. Dill and some zoning ordinances. CZ 2015-38, property of John Broad, fence, located at Cheek Springs Road and East Main Street, Taylor. He's requesting rezoning from R12 to RM5. Recommended approval and the committee recommended denial. On behalf of the committee, I move for approval of this ordinance at second reading. Any discussion? Yeah, I probably need to make that motion. I would like to make a motion that we table this. Motion to table? Yeah. All right. Any questions on that? Yeah, I can apply. Okay. There's a large part of the problem that was Sewer. He can't do it 
until REWA fixes the problem or Taylor's fix their problem. There's a problem, there's an impasse. And we met Wednesday to try to fix that impasse. Now, I don't think we came away with any answer whatsoever. I'm now working with Taylor, talking to some of the people at REWA. There is a solution they could uh, actually fix if they, if they would and take it a 90 degree pipe and turn it into 245, which would stop that shooting up. However, they've got to make the decision to do that. Right now they say, no, it's Taylor's got to stop putting so much water. I don't go into that much detail, but the, the point is that we're losing subdivisions in Taylor's because of that problem. And I, I, I wonder if we should just put it to, uh, to old, unless we're, uh, and just uh, discuss it more. Would that be possible rather than deny it? Well, um, we're, we're talking about six more units. That he can build, my understanding is he can build 41 units as it now stands. This is all, this whole controversy has come up over six units. I, it is Mr. Paul. Yeah. I, I stepped in. And my understanding was that the last meeting he, he wanted to amend the <coughs> So, what was it? Last meeting, but they, they were told so he couldn't do it. So yeah, I I, I would just <coughs> let him out at this point and let him bring back his new petition, the one that he wanted to bring up at the at the meeting that he was told he couldn't. All right, right. motion on the floor is written a motion to to approve this zoning change, and but uh, no vote, of course, would get yeah. it. Any questions? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Did you need to say that? I meant to deny. All, <laughs> all against, say aye. 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 All right, uh, it's unanimous against the motion. Mr. Dill. Uh, CD 2015-56, the property of Marcelo Caraco. LLC located on the corner of West Georgia Road and Mims Road, requesting rezoning from R1 to RS. Planning Commission and the committee recommended denial. And on behalf of the committee, I move uh, for adoption of this ordinance at second reading. Did, uh, did you say the Planning Commission and? They did. And staff? And Planning Commission and the committee. Everybody, okay. All right, any questions? All in favor say aye. Opposed? No. 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 Thank you vote unanimous. You vote in favor? Aye. Uh, I had my hand up, but you didn't see it, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, so I'm not upset about that. But I was going to ask to just go back to the committee because there have been some new information has come out about this in the last week or so. I've had some different calls about it. It's in Miss Gibson's district right across the street from my district. And uh, there are some things that I understand were not uh, brought out when this was originally discussed. but. If I didn't get it in time, I'm sorry. Right. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we reconsider the previous vote. All right, the initial vote was one in favor and 11 against. Is that right, Mr. Bell? Yes. And Mr. Dill is on the prevailing side. He makes a motion to reconsider. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, pass unanimously. Uh, Mr. Bell. Mr. Chairman, I would request that this. Uh, <clears throat> motion this property go back to the PND for discussion of some new information that has come forward on it. All right, uh, so the motion is to send it back to the committee. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. It's unanimous and it goes back to the committee. CZ 2015-59, property of Oceana Rapid LLC, located at 1320 Hamilton Avenue Extension, requesting rezoning from I-1 to S-1, 
when the commission and the committee recommended approval on behalf of the committee, I move for approval at second reading. All right, any discussion? This is an area here in the new bridge to come. All right, is that right, Mr. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Passing unanimously. All right. Uh, use waste power ordinance, Mr. Dill. I move for approval at second reading an ordinance to add provisions to the Greenville County Code of Regulation. To, to regulate tire businesses selling used or waste tires in the unincorporated areas of Greenville County. Any discussion? I would, uh, based on what we've heard tonight, there, I, I think it's probably, uh, for the most part, a very good ordinance. But what I would like to do is send it back to the committee to see if we need comments that uh, were made at the public hearing had any uh, validity. The one thing that concerns me a little bit is whether in a, whether the uh, building requirements in this ordinance really do, really would put um, most of the used tire, uh, tire dealers out of business. That, that does kind of concern me, and I don't know that if the people on the committee thought that that's what it uh, the ordinance uh, did or not, but if there's any question about it, I'd like for the committee to consider that <coughs> changes need to be made. Well, I felt when I looked at it that that first uh, sentence in section three pretty much shut them down. Well, that's true. I think that maybe the language could be changed somewhat so that that might not, uh, might not be the case. I, I think it might not be tweaked somewhat. I, I definitely see the need for an ordinance. Dr. Cage, you have I was going to agree with the MC factor. And yes, Mr. Ballard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have two of these uh, businesses in my district. Uh, I, actually, I live about halfway between them. And uh, one of them was represented here with uh, two different people tonight. Uh, I am not going to describe it, but I want to make some pictures of their operation, which is outside, but it's contained in everything to give you just a different perspective. But I I really would like this to go back to committee and uh, be discussed a little bit further. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor of sending it back to committee, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Pass unanimously. All right, Mr. Kerb, hospitality tax man. Uh, yes, sir, item 10C, I move for approval at second reading in order to amend Exhibit A established as an addendum to Ordinance 4079 as last amended by Ordinance Number 4686 so as to appropriate additional operating funds for tourist-related projects. All right, Mr. Burns. Any questions, Mr. Burns? I just wanted, uh, Mr. Kerb, because of the, the, the nature on this one, if, if we might, I don't know if it goes on the ordinance or exhibit A, or we can just ask the, the administrator, but um, some of this came, came surprised surprise that there was monies to be, be able to be allocated. So my, my idea was to have that we, every quarter we get an update on the funds from the hospitality tax and um, so that we can collectively make decisions on, on not individual projects, but on but the funds that might be available or it might be doing as well. And, and we all look at them before um, we start. So it's not necessarily a, a question on this one. I think we should pass this one and, and add this project to the list. But going forward, how do we uh, uh, select projects to be included on this list uh, in, a, in a more inclusive fashion? All right. Can we, and that, if that can be handled just by a, a simple report every quarter, by the administrator or something like that. We just haven't, when we put those in ordinance, say we want an update every annually, um, we're not good at remembering when those come about. I believe it's included in the uh, 
quarterly financial reports you get now, and it's not on there, sure, but it is. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman, I, I had a lot of concerns about this. Some uh, were voiced in the, by one of our speakers a while ago. Uh, and I've talked to these people, and I've talked to people in the community, and uh, I decided it, uh, it's probably the best thing for the, for the community, not just Greenville City, but the uh, community to go ahead and approve this. Uh, but I agree with Mr. Burns in the future we need to know how much money we got and, and be a little more uh, concerned about everything because we do have other parts of the county that need maintenance on parks and need uh, a lot of things done that uh, a lot of upkeep and uh, I'm going to I'm going to bite the bullet on this one because I, I'm convinced that these people are going to see it through. I was so afraid in our last meeting. I kept seeing visions of all of the presentations that I've sat through over the last 10 or 12 years about the CBB's uh, blue wall. And then I heard this presentation and I said, well, what's going to happen to our $500,000? If these people just decide one day, well, we're going to move to Ohio or somewhere else, and they're going to give this thing up, and uh, because you know that that thing is looking us in the eye, and uh, and it hadn't it hadn't got off of the ground good, but uh, after talking with them, I'm convinced they're going to see this thing through, and if they don't, I'm going to remind them. I think, uh, you know, one comment was made last week was something about the fact that they were replacing the bridge. If I'm not mistaken, the bridge they're replacing is one where cyclists had, were instructed to get off of their bicycles and walk across that bridge. So it was not uh, a very good bridge for replacing. I've been there. I've been down and seen where they were going to build this park. And uh, it's, it's not the most desirable place that I would want to put it, but if that's where they want to do it, it'll improve that, it'll improve that section. Well, they're not done yet, yet, so. All right, then it's a today, but it'll probably be cleared up by next week. Uh, that's what I was going to say. It's a very committed group of uh, people working to see this project through, and they're very, very enthused about it, and I, I just, uh, I feel that they would go on the way, and I don't think the county would join hands with uh, the city and the other partners so that we can be uh, one third of the governing body. All right. Any other discussion? I agree with, I think it, it, that needs to be a demand. I meant to mention that a while ago that we are included in the governing body. I think uh, she agreed to that and agreed with me. Yeah. I think that we need to make sure that that happens. All right, all in favor of the ordinance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right, we had uh, one, one negative vote. Uh, <coughs> all right, uh, Mr. Kerr. Yes, sir. 10D, uh, Anderson, Quentin uh, Anderson, Multi County Industrial Business Park. Agreement Amendment Project Lab and LIBA. I move for approval at second reading an ordinance to amend an agreement for the development of a joint county industrial and business park, 2010 Park of Anderson and Greenwood Counties, so as to enlarge the park. Any discussion? All in favor of the ordinance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. All right. Project Pumpkin Field Lieu of Tax Agreement. I move for approval at second reading an ordinance authorizing one, the execution and delivery of a field lieu of tax agreement by and between Greenwood County, South Carolina, and a company identified for the time being as Project Pumpkin, acting for itself, one or more affiliates, and or other project sponsors, pursuant to which the county shall uh, covenant to accept certain negotiated fees in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to the establishment 
and or expansion of certain facilities in the county and two other matters related thereto. Any discussion on the ordinance? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Pass unanimous. This is our item 10 F project blue sky fee lieu of tax agreement. I'll move for approval at second reading an ordinance authorizing the execution and delivery of a fee in lieu of tax agreement buying between Greenville County, South Carolina, and Project Blue Sky, the granting of certain infrastructure tax credits to the company and other matters. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Pass unanimous. Item 10 G, Greenville Anderson Multi County Industrial Business Park Agreement Amendment Project Blue Sky. I move for approval at second reading an ordinance to amend an, or an agreement for the development of the Joint County Industrial and Business Park 2010 Park of Anderson and Greenville County so as to enlarge the park. All in favor of the ordinance, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. H. Greenville Anderson Multi County Industrial Business Park Agreement Amendment CH2M Hill Incorporated. I move for approval at second reading in ordinance to amend an agreement for the development of the Joint County Industrial and Business Park 2010 Park of Anderson and Greenville County so as to enlarge the park. All right. the ordinance and all in favor please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Pass unanimously. Uh, ordinance is in first reading. Mr. Dill. I present for first reading the ordinance to amend the Greenville County Land Development Regulations as amended to exempt from the slumbery plan <coughs> requirements the conveyance of subdivided land to immediate family members. All right, and that will be, have you had that committee yet? Yeah. All right, I'll stay on the floor. citizens now for items not on the current agenda. Uh, we have some people signed up, Ms. Kaiser. Yes. You have three minutes uh, and uh, give your name and address when you come to the podium and pull the mic close to the mouth of the proper mic. Ms. Kaiser. so I appreciate the opportunity. My name is Scott Black. I reside at 100 Farm Valley Court uh, Sugar Mill Subdivision in Greer. Uh, I'm coming to you as a concerned citizen of Greenville County. Uh, I'm speaking against the unchecked, unvetted resettlement of refugees in our county. 
as one who has seen the pictures of terror, uh, of the horrific acts of terror, beheadings, mutilation, torture, crucifixion, com uh, completed by the Islamic State or ISIS, my heart goes out to the people fleeing terrorism in their country. One of the stated, check, check. Uh, one of the stated goals of these terror groups is to drive people from their homes and countries using mass migration without subsequent assimilation to destabilize European nations and the United States. The FBI has stated it is unable to effectively assess the possible ties to terrorism of refugees that may be resettled in the United States. We must consider the long-term impact of bringing unvetted refugees from states with a long history of terrorism and hatred of our freedom into our country and into our county. <coughs> Jason Lee, who spoke with you tonight from World Relief, answered my question, I believe honestly, after his presentation to you, after the meeting was over, when he stated he did not have any confidence in Homeland Security's ability to uh, ferret out a potential terrorists from the different refugee camps. This is not about bigotry or hatred. It is about taking an intelligent approach to refugee resettlement. Until the county council is fully convinced refugees from terror states can be resettled in our county without becoming a ward or a threat to the county, please do, do not take action that allows resettlement of these people into uh, the state of South Carolina or Greenville County. Uh, thank you for hearing me. Yes, hi, good evening. Like Scott, this is my first time addressing a county council. My name is Diane Hardy and my Greenville address is 1209 East Washington, Greenville. Um, like many of, of people in this room, I have concerns about this $1 billion a year refugee industry. The long-term cost of giving refugees a social security number, Medicaid, cash, healthcare, social services, and grant money towards cars and home purchase is concerning. Um, the fact that most of what you read is encouraging them to integrate rather than assimilate. But that isn't what I want to talk about tonight. I want to address another issue that I have been dealing with with this refugee issue, and that is the issue with the media. I, once I saw this article today, I wanted to change what I was going to say. I don't know if you saw the article this morning, Redefined Southern Hospitality in the Greenville News by da uh, Nadia Aziz. And she basically, one of the lines is, elected officials from county councils to state representatives and members of Congress have too often acted from ignorance. This woman's background, she did graduate from Clemson, says she has a passion for social justice. She worked with America Votes in Washington, D.C. She's with the Barr Foundation in Chicago, and she worked with the Democratic National Committee. Now, I am all for free speech, so I'm happy to have this printed. That's perfectly fine. But every, or most of the articles, and I'm also dealing with it with TV media in, in addition, it seems like there is a collaborative synergy between this refugee program and the media. Um, an, art, uh, an event that I spoke at and delivered a PowerPoint on refugee resettlement was purely factual. I had a fact sheet like this that was given out to everyone, including the reporter. I also emailed it to him after the event. The refugee, the, the article they wrote was, Refugee issues stir strong emotions despite no influx expected. I am all about facts, not fear, um, but yet none of this could not get this out there. I want to be sure that the citizens are fully informed of the facts of this issue. The other article is no refugees expected to land here. I would also like to let, so what I'm asking for is your help to get the other side out so citizens can hear both sides of the issue. 
They, this article, Follow the Money, which is all about the tens and hundreds of millions of dollars that are going to these contractors to bring refugees here because they are paid by the head. And this, this part, these facts are not getting <coughs> out to the media. There is a program called Welcoming America, which um, is given tax money and also gets money from various foundations. And their job is to do culture shaping, to affect what the media is writing, to help with propaganda, and to follow state legislation so that you can um, soften the community to the idea of the refugees coming. So thank you very much, and hope to hear both sides of this issue. Thank you. Ms. Kaiser, I believe uh, she has left. Patricia Henderson. Patricia Henderson here? Yes, she's here. My name is Patricia Henderson. My address is 9 Cell River Drive in Greenville, South Carolina, 29605. And I come today as a concerned citizen uh, to speak against the zoning and licensing of an adult entertainment lounge in our community. Uh, we pride ourselves in our community as being a healthy community. And I feel that uh, allowing this business to um, open in our community will be a poison to our community. And so I ask that this be taken a, a real good look at to say, you know, where we can allow these businesses to open. Thank you. Yes. Are they seeking a rezoning? I'm not really sure, sir. When I called the zoning uh, office today, they have not returned my call. And where is this location? It's at the tip of uh, Frontage Road and Whitehorse Road, right at the corner where McDonald's. I'm not sure if you are familiar with that. It's close to 85 and uh, Whitehorse Road. You don't have I do not have those shirts. We'll go ahead and check it out, but I believe I might have some information. All right. You know where she's talking about? I believe I do. It's, it's I, mean, I know exactly. Okay. Well, don't check it out. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Kaiser? Pat Taylor, Ridgeland, South Carolina. I'd like to say to all of you that's been working on this, I really appreciate y'all have started working on this refugee resentment. Um, I really came tonight to say thank you for the work that you've been doing. I mean, I hope you will continue no, okay. to talk and do that resolution that I asked you to do before. Uh, the computer last night when I was looking, that um, they're not telling us the truth. There's some things we know is truth and some is not truth. But they don't appreciate what we do. Even what we've done, they dug for them. There was a picture on the computer where they throw clothes out. People have given them clothes, they've given them food, and they've been, been met, make big messes with what they do. And another thing that um, they do when they come here, they don't want to do like our ways. I'm not just saying our Christian ways, because we, we do try to live Christian lives, but I'm just saying that what we've lived in our life, our southern lives and our things that we live every day, they want to change our lives, not them work with us. So I hope you will think about doing that and doing that resolution for us. Thank you. Thank you. There is no
we need you to get involved in this to keep track of where are these people coming from. As a former truck driver, I've traveled all over this country and seen these programs coming in. In Augusta, Lincoln Falls, Maine, they had Somalia refugees come in. The town nearly went bankrupt because they were given so much welfare and aid, and they did not want to work. And, and after a period of time, like previously, uh, Mr. Lee was there, he was explaining, after eight months, he had no track of where they went. He didn't say it. He was very vague on every question that was asked to his points. And they were getting aid. Medicare, Medicaid. I just went through getting my medical uh, redone for mine. My medical has gone up for the same plan I had last year. It's gone up over a hundred some dollars for this year. They're getting 380 never put one not dime in. I've worked since I was 15 years old. Never asked for aid, never got any aid, never expected any aid. I worked for everything I got. These people are coming in, getting housing, jobs, and everything else. And in the meantime, we got 94 million American people that are on welfare and food stamps because they, either they do not want to work or they can't find any jobs that are paying them to sustain them because welfare and the aid is paying them better than actually working. That's why they have to bring these foreign workers in to take these jobs because they're paying them below, below the table, minimum wages. And then you also look at other, other places like Wisconsin and, and Minnesota. They have huge Somali, you know, you can say they're coming from, uh, I see many Burmese. Well, these were Somalis that came in. Same thing in Wisconsin and Minnesota. They're taking over that area of the country and they bring one comes in, there's 10 more that come in behind them as their relatives or connections within a few years. They're just taking over the whole area of the country. So as our representatives, as our representatives of the Republic, you need to keep track of where are these refugees are coming from, who they are, what kind of people they are, there's nothing wrong with good people coming to this country as long as they're willing to work. Like I said in the last week, my ancestors were refugees from Germany. They never got a dime from the government. They worked hard. They were dirt farmers. All my ancestors grew up on dairy farms pretty much. And I was the last one that never worked on a dairy farm in my, my generation that, that I know because the farms are going by the wayside. So thank you for your time. Sir, what state did you grow up? What state did you grow up? Which state? Yeah, through the Pennsylvania. That's what I thought. Thank you, sir. <laughs> he said, he said, use. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. in diversity in many areas, 
I've lived in Europe. I just returned from Europe. So I've seen firsthand the, the crisis and the impact of refugees from the Middle East to European countries. <coughs> and it is a crisis in Europe. And it is not a crisis that we should bring to our shores. I want to urge you to use cool, calm, deliberation, common sense, not a knee-jerk, political, correct reaction and worry about offending people. I think we cannot, in the name of compassion, in the name of diversity, undermine the safety and security of the people in our community. And so I want you to really, really urge caution as you deliberate this resolution. Thank you for your time. several months, but a couple of things have come to light, and that's well, some of my comments last time on, on some of the economic development situation, the FILOs and the incentive packages we're offering, and it's come, after talking with some of you, it's come to um, my notice that, that there's, there might be a disconnect between what we anticipate, though there's only a few of us that have actually served on the GADC board, and so know what the GADC board is doing, and how they're vetting it, and what staff is doing, and, and we're actually, um, we talked uh, uh, with, with legal, and, and they're going to go back and review some documentation. Um, but the, the parameters and our process and, and the reviews and how we go about that, I think it might be advantageous for us to uh, to uh, bring JDC staff uh, into a committee the whole meeting talk uh, about the, the process that they're now using, the parameters that they're using, and uh, um, have a discussion, have an open discussion uh, about the direction that we want to take and make sure that everyone's on board of who, uh, who is doing what, and, and certainly what our role is, and, and um, what uh, roles are being done uh, on our behalf, on our behalf um, by both JDC and the staff. So I'd like to ask uh, that we uh, have maybe in January, certainly not for the holidays, but maybe the next meeting in January, second meeting in January, committee as a whole, that we invite JDC staff to to come and and talk to us about uh, how things are. Um, so, Jen, I hope you, you will put that on the committee the whole uh, agenda All right. um, for for that meeting. The second one is: um, did, did we have, did we have any? I know we had some conversations about it, but did we receive any documentation about the EMS? Uh, any, any letters? Anything new on the EMS situation that's, that's come up since? Uh, oh no, I don't know. It's something. They sent out a, uh, a letter this week. Do you want to read it, Mr. Uh, actually, I do have a letter in front of me. I was going to uh, forward it to see. It's from G uh, Greenville Health System. I was going to forward it to you all in the morning. Uh, basically, it says, uh, Dear Joe, for close to 20 years, the residents of Greenville County have benefited from a partnership that Greenville Health System, GHS, has had with Greenville County Emergency Medical Services. Together, we have improved the care delivered by EMS and area health care providers through coordinated clinical research and educational programs. We have been successful in many joint initiatives and appreciate the professional relationship we have with GC EMS management and staff. Almost two years ago, GHS began working with Greenville County to look into the possibility of improving our ongoing relationship with GC EMS. As the second largest ambulance service in Greenville, we saw the potential to reduce operating costs and improve efficiencies through an enhanced relationship. These discussions were also timely because we were in the process of implementing our total health strategy to improve the health of entire communities. As we continue to pursue this strategy, you will see an increasing GHS presence in a variety of neighborhoods and communities. Consistent with our historic track record and our vision for the future, GHS will continue to help area residents improve their health and wellness in new ways 
through innovative clinical and social programs enhanced through community education and outreach. Success in these communities will be measured by our ability to eliminate avoidable costs such as unnecessary visits with emergency departments and local hospitals, as well as our impact on enhancing the patient experience and improving the health of population service. It has always been our hope that we could work together to advance population health efforts to benefit the community and to pursue operating synergies associated with combining the medical transport infrastructures of GC, EMS, and GHS. We sincerely believe the future model we propose would have honored and protected patient choice, save both health care and county taxpayer dollars, improve the health and well-being of our residents, and most importantly, prepare for the health care environment. We recognize that politics has prohibited and will continue to prohibit substantive discussion on the merits of the proposal, not to mention the ability to implement the innovative mobile health model proposed. Given these limitations, we are withdrawing our proposal related to the EMS system. We believe it is in the, our residents' best interest to maintain the present EMS system. This will preserve the high quality EMS service currently in place and allow GHS to focus on advancing its population health efforts within the community. We look forward to continuing our current relationship with Greenville County, Bonds, Course, and Francis Health System, and other stakeholders in supporting GC EMS. Sincerely, Angela Sinopoli, MD, Vice President of Clinical Administration, Chief Medical Officer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I don't know that that's, um, if you would please send that out too, because I, I think you could, we still want to make sure that we do everything possible to enhance the EMS services, and if, that's, if that particular option is not, not viable, then um, uh, I still think we have, we had discussions about how to make things better, how to make it, and we want to continue to look for improvement as far as you know, EMS service. So. Uh, if, if I may, we are just to continue those efforts. Right. We will. We will continue. In fact, we've done some recent changes. Uh, if you recall, though, we never did really vet the uh, proposal that was prepared by county staff, and so uh, that did not that proposal will not work uh, with any any way else. Uh, it just the way it's designed. Not. However, we will continue to look at ways to improve and make some changes to uh, EMS operations just in the last couple of days, not in relation to this, but just in relation to uh, what we do with EMS because we want to make sure we continue to have the best EMS system that we possibly can. I think we do. All right, Ms. North. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to let you know that the summer programs that uh, we were able to uh,
And I also want to bring your attention, I hope that you all received um, the email from Julia Seta this week um, uh, regarding the Meals on Wheels open house that's coming up. You know, I still maintain close ties with my, my family and friends there, and they're um, doing a ribbon cutting on Tuesday, November 10th, and if you all have a chance to stop by and see the renovations they've done, um, I appreciate it. Thank Wilkins, 
talk about the challenges that faces the solicitor's office and really he talked about law enforcement. And the thing he started out with is the criticisms now that law enforcement get for doing their job. They've made instantaneous uh, reactions to situations that come upon them and they have to react quickly to protect themselves and to protect other people. And when they do an arrest of people who don't do what the law enforcement te the officer tells them to do, they get criticized Many of them lose their jobs, and they have to leave the community because they can no longer stand the stress and the tribulation of living in the community that we're trying to serve. It's a terrible situation, and we have to move this country back and, and get back on the right trail. And I just want to say, I think that the folks around this table up here are people who want to see us do that here in America. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you for letting me vent here tonight. And, all I say is, God, please bless America and bless Greenville County. Thank you. All right, Mr. Kirby. Everyone is invited and everyone will be welcome. A week from Wednesday on November the 11th, Greenville County Joint Veterans Council will have a Veterans Day ceremony at 10 a.m. in the morning right here at County Square. Please come. Everybody welcome. Everybody invited. Uh, second thing is, I want to endorse uh, Mr. Burns' uh, request that GADC come and meet with all the council members, committee the whole. I think that's a great idea, and I'm glad he brought it up tonight. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Mr. Hill. Uh, I would like to recommend that anyone who is uh, involved in the tire, huge tire business, any, any changes that they would recommend to the ordinance, I'd love for them to make sure they get it to uh, either me or some member of the committee so that we can discuss those at our next meeting, which will be in two weeks. We've got two weeks to get your heads together and uh, let us know what we can do. Because we don't want to hurt our business, but we do want to uh, try to help our communities with a lot of complaints out in the real about this. And second thing I've got is you, you stimulated me, Mr. Payne, and, uh, and, and what you said, because I think our big problem here is we, uh, in, as a community or as a country, we forgot that the number one priority is public safety. That uh, we had presidents, and I know the speaker today in the committee, the whole kept talking about Ronald Reagan, but let's talk about Eisenhower. Let's talk about Truman. Let's talk about people who, the people that we were fighting were not able to walk the streets, drive the taxi cabs, run the restaurants, and do the things that we're seeing happen today. Uh, I think if, if we failed in, in not teaching American history because a lot of times in the past, the number one priority was to protect the citizens of America. And uh, I don't feel like that I'm being protected. I don't know why. It could be that I watched the twin tires fall. That could be the reason I'm afraid. But I, I first time in my life, I'm afraid in America. Because these people coming in here may not love me. They may want to kill me. Now that's not a good feeling. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. I've heard a lot tonight, and I'm going to go and read history. I think the history of the late 30s up until 1945 would be very instructive for all of us to review uh, as we discuss this issue. And uh, one thing, a little bit more mundane. I've, I've heard that, as, that uh, you know, about a year or so ago, we uh, increase the taxes on the municipalities by 4.7 mills. I would like to know if an agreement has been reached with the municipalities yet, because I've been told that it hasn't been, and um, I'd just like to know what the status of that is. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of council, if you recall, council gave the authorization to actually provide up to a billion dollars in the 
this fountain. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion back and forth, and uh, uh, in fact, I spoke with Mayor Danner just uh, last week, and they were supposed to be getting in touch with us to uh, move forward. But that's all I know. Somewhat concerned about that because we did raise the tax pretty substantially on all the municipal residents, and it disturbs me to some extent that this has been some time and we still haven't, uh, we still don't have the you know, municipalities with taxing the people that live there 4.6 mills more than they were being taxed. And uh, some of the municipal leaders have contacted me and said that they're unhappy about what's being offered. All right. No, sir. 